Right, I was absolutely stunned to realise how much money Qatar have invested in, in London. Um, I mean, you know, they, they, they built the Shard, they own Canary Wolf. Sorry, this might sound a bit London-centric to other people, but the Qataris are now threatening to withdraw that money and invest it in other cities around the UK. Surely, Sam, given the human rights issues, and you're quite vocal on the whole, uh, um, the, the gay rights, quite rightly so, surely it's time we did something definite to signal our disapproval of Qatari money and the human rights issues and, and maybe not take so much money from them. What do you think? Do you know what? Um, I think if this was five years ago, then maybe we had a point. Um, but we've had Brexit since then. We've had the Russia-Ukraine war since then. Um, you know, we, we're, we're, we are imposing sanctions on, you know, on, on Russian oligarchs who like, who've, have, who've poured plenty of money into London. And, you know, and, and also with our own cost of living crisis, we simply can't afford um, to lose the Qatari money. And of course, you know, I am an LGBTQ advocate, you know, and, I, and the, one of the reasons why this becomes such a massive deal is because of FIFA making such a massive deal themselves about um, LGBT, LGBTQ rights and gay players, etc. And then obviously taking the Qataris money and then obviously the for all that's happened since then. I mean, this has been, I would say, a, a PR nightmare for Qatar because all it has done is shine a light on, you know, their human rights um, abuses. And you know, so to, to come back and to say that we should, boy I mean, I would say, Dawn, it would be almost impossible for us to boycott their money. I mean, like, like you said, the Shard, Harrods, when, they, when, they, when, you know, when, when I go into Harrods, they don't ask me to stop being so gay, for example. So, I mean, like, what exactly would we be doing? Well, that's, that's interesting, because that's exactly what the advice was for uh, gay fans travelling to Qatar, wasn't it? Can you just not be quite so gay for three weeks? I mean, quite what that actually means is another matter. But, I mean, it, surely by taking all this money, we are being as hypocritical as the various Garys, whom we know we're talking about here, who have, and, and, and one Mr Beckham. So, I mean, we, we have to draw a line somewhere. We can't rant and rave about it and then just accept the money, can we? Well, as I said, this was, you know, this, you know, this has been happening for years with Qatari money. I mean, you don't just, you know, you don't just build the shard overnight. You don't just own Harrods overnight. This is, um, you know, this is, this is huge. Um, and like I said, you know, it's only come to the fore because of the World Cup that they fought so hard to get. Um, you know, it's, we don't, we just, we just don't have, we don't have the money in this country. And like, and, and since, and since obviously, you know, we were sold the white elephant of, Brexit, um, you know, we don't have, we don't have relations with, we don't have, you know, we don't have relations with the EU anymore. And, you know, so Russia, EU, Qatari will, will send them off the way, off, off as well. I mean, we just, we just can't do it. Of course, it's lovely to have, it's lovely to have our morals, but we've dug ourselves into a hole that would be impossible to get out of. Morals and money, it's a dangerous combination. Um, I'm also joined by social policy analyst, Dr. Rakib Hussain. Hello, Ricky. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, what, what's your take on this? I mean, I, as I said to Sam just now, I was genuinely stunned at how much money is invested in London by the Qataris. Should we, should well, we be accepting so much? Uh, well, I, I, unfortunately, Dawn, I just don't think that we really have a choice. This is the kind of economic orthodoxy that we've been promoting for decades. Um, we have a hyper-financialised intensely globalized economy and that involves a great deal of foreign investment uh, in London uh, in particular. Uh, as you said at the turn of the century the Qatari royal family have been buying up a, a great deal of property uh, in the capital so now that they have they've gained such a foothold in our capital's economy to then say we should boycott Qatar, uh, Qatari money uh, I, I just don't think that's uh, it, that's that's not economically possible to do so and one of the interesting things they've promised Rakib is our um, a, a bigger investment in um, mm. in, in, in green issues in sort of like environmental issues to help us we, we, you know meet the targets we have set for ourselves I mean, if we said no to that, then surely we'd be fools to ourselves and fools to the planet. 
Absolutely. I think that there's, of course, there's discussions to be had in terms of uh, how much foreign um, investment we should have in terms of property being bought up in London. Uh, there's a great deal of uh, Qatari ownership in Westminster. And I think really, uh, really interesting point to make here, Dawn, is that looking at the recent census figures, a great number of people have actually left Westminster, people who are living there locally, possibly because they simply can't afford to buy property there. And foreign investment uh, in terms of wealth the uh, foreign families uh, building their property portfolio through London properties, that's definitely uh, feeding into that. Now, of course, there, there'll be people who will be very concerned about uh, Qatar's record when it comes to human rights. A uh, great deal has been talked about that uh, over the course of the World Cup. Uh, Qatar also has uh, traditionally been accused of sponsoring Islamist extremism. Uh, there's, been, there's been great concerns over its uh, support for the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, concerns over its relationship with the with with Iran as well. But the reality is, Dawn, is that we've promoted this economic model where we really wanted uh, London to be this uh, sort of financial centre. So then to say that, oh, we, won't, we don't want Qatari money because of uh, its human rights record, unfortunately, we just, uh, we, we're not in the luxurious position to do that. Right. Sam, um, uh, Sam, are you still there, my love? Let's bring you back in. Um, Sam? Yes, you are. Right. OK, I've got both of you now. So, I mean... <laughs> Will we ever be in that situation, though, given what you've both been saying about this dependency, to ever stand on our own two feet financially? Sam? Um, I mean, how long is a piece of string? I mean, you could, you could see, I mean, obviously that would be, that would be fantastic, but we don't, certainly don't have the resources. I mean, like, Qatar, like, exports, they're the number one exporter of natural gas in the world. Mm. So, I mean, like, I mean, this is... I mean, I completely agree with with Rakib. Like, this is it is impossible to untangle what has what we have asked Qatar to tangle themselves up in. I mean, of course, of course, we disagree. Like, you know, their human rights record was exactly the same five years when we were, you know, going cap in hand. So, I mean, like, this is you know the things that we the things that we could have controlled, such as Brexit, for example, that have been damaging on the economy. Stop um, mentioning you know, Brexit, things, Sam. Things, oh. <laughs> It hasn't, nothing's come to fruition, unfortunately, Dawn, but like, like what, what I'm saying is like, you know, we don't, the Brexit has left us, and the pandemic has left us in a position whereby we cannot be turning our, turning our backs on Qatar We're because, we don't, because uh, we, don't, we don't like how they live their lives. Rakib, one That's last word for you. I mean, what, if we can't turn down their money, what message should we be giving to the Qataris? Well, I, I think that when it comes to um, human rights abuses, which have, which have taken place in Qatar, especially in the build up to the World Cup, I think that it's right for um, uh, people in the UK to raise those issues, um, how uh, members of the LGBT community are treated in Qatar. But I think that we, we can do that. But in terms of making that moral stance, but then also talking about uh, rejecting Qatari finances, um, for Qatari financial interests in London, unfortunately, I just think that would be a step too far, largely because of the economic model that we've promoted, especially in our capital.